So um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, as you can see, I'm a tiny bit nervous because it's been a long time since I didn't have a conversation uh, in English. Um, and uh, so I, I guess uh, you will be indulgent. I hope it won't be uh, too annoying, but uh, <laughs> I think it's going to be fine. Um, I'm uh, Luz Tramipa. Okay, so. Okay, so I'm Luz Tremblay Parent. Um, I was searching, I was looking for uh, orthopedagogue in English. I, I saw learning disabilities counselor. Uh, Virginie told me it was a special needs uh, teacher. So whatever you call it, I'm, uh, I'm in the learning disability uh, sector um, and I'm very interested in differentiation and um, uh, inclusive education. This is really my passion. And um, yeah, I'm in La Salle, so in Montreal. I did my bachelor in Sherbrooke uh, in special, special education. I recently did my MBA. Um, so for, for your information, I, I don't know if it's uh, pertinent here, but uh, here it is. And I represent the L'Equipe Choc. L'Equipe Choc, what it is, it's um, complementary ser services and they do some workshop according to your needs. So if you have a special request in your school, they can uh, build uh, a workshop specially for your team or your, uh, your school or whatever it is. Um, it can be on learning disabilities, but uh, also executive functions. I don't know if it's the right term in English, but uh, there's a, a lot of things that you can have free workshop. It's uh, the, the government are pay, is, is paying some resources for that. So that's it. So I, I decided to take the challenge and, and represent my, my team uh, in this English uh, event you have uh, to share with you some knowledge about um, dyslexia. So let's go. <laughs> let's start with it. Uh, before we start, uh, this is my warning for you. So the goal of this workshop is not to give diagnosis to our children, or our children, our students, sorry. Um, and so, because it, it, sometimes we have a tendency to do that. Oh my God, this, this student is so, is, he is autistic, right? Or he has uh, ADHD, right? And so we are not qualified to diagnosis. So dyslexia is a diagnostic a diagnostic you can have for, from the doctors or orthophonists, but um, I, I mean, I, I want to share with you some knowledge so you can have it in your in your mind. And when you see um, students having this uh, difficulties in reading, you can have it in the back of your mind without giving a diagnostic diagnostic, uh, but uh, to have any so solution or intervention you can try in your class. Uh, understanding how learners think and evolve can help us to be flexible, to find innovative solution and to promote inclusive pedagogy. So that's a nice sentence. I really, uh, sometimes my colleagues will call me the, the unicorn of the place because I think everyone can, can evolve in our, in our schools, it's just us to adapt and find a way uh, for our student to evolve. So, uh, and it's, I know it's not magic like that. It's sometimes we have a lot of challenge, but uh, I mean, this, this time it's, it's a, a great way to think about how we teach and how we can do differently sometimes. Um, dyslexia, so I see there's uh, 18, participants so if you want in the chat what comes into your mind or if you want to raise your hand and uh, share with us what comes into your mind when when speaking of dyslexia what what do you know what if you had one sentence or one word or one thought you want to share so I don't know if I can see the chat let me see so is there anybody who wants to share? I don't know if I can see uh, the chat. Yeah, you should be able to. Okay. It's here. Oh, because you're sharing your screen. It might be a little tricky. Oh, okay. Okay. I see. I thought it, it, it wasn't working. So, 
yeah, I, difficulty in identifying certain letters while reading, mix between P, B, Q, et cetera, yeah. Difficulties decoding characters. Okay, so this is a one-on-one workshop for dyslexia. I know sometimes people don't really understand what it is. I promise you, you will feel it, what it's dyslexia by the end of this uh, workshop. So uh, um, I'll go with the next slide. Next slide, I, I decided to put a definition uh, on the screen. I want you to read it. And then we'll come back in a minute or two so, uh, so we can share about what we understand about it. So please take a moment to read it. Out. Out. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I see your some of some of your faces. I don't see everybody, but <laughs> well, you get it. Um, if we were, uh, if it was a regular text, probably you would be done. Uh, probably most of you are not done yet, <laughs> but I'm I'm stopping it there. <laughs> because it's painful, right? <laughs> um, I would like you to share with me, what did you think about uh, this experience? <laughs> it's now your time, your time to talk to me about that. Is that what the students with dyslexia, dyslexia see when they read? Oh my God. Well, it's not what exactly what they see. This is more because I, this is like the, the um, uh, how do you say that? This is the, the big winner, you know, this is the biggest disability you can find in dyslexia. Um, as you can see, I switched some, uh, some someone told me uh, B, uh, mix, mix letters, P, uh, D, B, and Q. So that's what I did. I also did, um, uh, U instead of N. Sometimes I deleted some some letters. So uh, and sometimes I switch it up. So it depends on the the student who has dyslex, dys, uh, dyslexia. Um, it can be very uh, variable. So there's not one type of this dyslexia. I, it's not every dyslexic that reads exact exactly like that. My goal here was for you to feel the pain <laughs> okay so i want you to i wanted you to feel how it it can be really hard for a, a student who have dyslexia uh, when we ask them to read and um, um, some some students uh, have been traumatized because they were told they were lazy when they didn't want to read and now you can feel how it can be painful uh, when we give them some uh, some books and we ask them to read. So, but there's a solution now. So, uh, <laughs> um, let me read it to you. Uh, dyslexia is a specific learning disability that is neurobiological in origin. It is characterized by difficulties with accurate and or fluent word recognition and by poor spelling and decoding abilities. These difficulties typically result from a deficit in the phonological component of language that is often unexpected in relation to other cognitive abilities and the provision of effective classroom in instruction. Secondary con consequences may include problems in reading comprehension and reduced reading experience that can impede growth of vocabulary and background knowledge. So, um, what I did here, I, I just read it, read the whole paragraph for you. And that's pretty much what the software I'm gonna talk 
later. Uh, that's pretty much what the softwares can do for a dyslexic uh, student. So you you understand that it's really helpful. It it um, it removes a lot of uh, the weight and the the pain of reading. So this is a, a big part of the solution. I will come back to it later. But I wanted you again to feel what it's like to be read uh, by somebody else or something else. You stop me if ever you have questions, but uh, well, that's good. <laughs> oh, so we, we just talked about it. Um, I, I forgot to switch the slide. So before we talk about dyslexia, um, I want to uh, emphasize on the reading process. It's really complex. It's not like breathing or closing our eyes a few times every minute. It's not something we are born with and it's uh, really complex. So for me, if, uh, for you to understand dyslexia, it was important for me to um, explain what's the reading process. So I put the example with telephone. So with telephone, if, if ever it was uh, the first time, let's say it's the first time I see this word, uh, telephone, what I will do is I will um, sorry, I just switch it up. Okay, so the first part, part of my brain will see the letters. So it will identify every letters with my eyes. So that's the orthographic process. And then there's the phonologic processes that will enter into, into play. So the other part of the brain will identify the letters and um, interprets the sound of letters and combination of letters. Because here in telephone, I, I, I took this one because PH, uh, it's, a, it's a combination of letters that make the sound, for example. So my brain knows that. A third part is the meaning process. So once I identify every sound, I, I can say into my brain, telephone, okay? And I can um, imagine if I know already what telephone means. Um, so I can, uh, I can com co combine the, the meaning of telephone with what, it's, what is it. Finally, there is the, um, the fourth process that will come into play and it's to connect the word into the context of the text. So, um, I already show you a tiny little bit of the other slide, but all of this will, um, will mobilize different parts of the brain. And as you can see, there's a lot of parts in the brain that are, that comes into play. It's not something really simple. Um, on the left part of this slide uh, is mostly reading skills for the word. So uh, identifying the letters, uh, the sounds and um, the meaning of the word, but on the right side, it's the meaning and the, the comprehension part. So it's pretty, um, the, the whole brain really is mobilized. So it's not a simple, a, a simple task. Um, there's a serious research. As you can see, I, those images are from this, the site LD at school. If you don't know this site, LD at school.ca. Um, I will put it uh, on the screen later on, but this is a such a great website if you want to learn more about learning disabilities. Information on this site is um, comes all from research and uh, from a serious um, work that have been done uh, in universities. So it's, it's pretty uh, a pretty good site. It's from Ontario, so the the uh, they did a pretty good job with this site. And there's a webinars, uh, free information, it's all free. So go and see, there's a, a lot of things to learn here. Um, so there's on this site, uh, they mentioned that there's a, a research that were found that people with, uh, with no dyslexia um, has direct connections in the brain. And people with dyslexia, they don't have it direct connections in the brain between different parts. Uh, I'm not uh, a doctor, a neurolog? Neurologist. Neurologist. Neurologist, okay, thank you. 
I'm not a neur neurologist, but um, they find out that it, it's not direct. So people with dyslexia has to uh, train their brain to do more connections in between the, those parts in the brain. Then this is my hypothesis as a non neurologist, uh, but I, over the years, I found that people with dyslexia has a lot of a big creativity, very sensitive. And my hypothesis is that they, they are used to mobilize their brain and think differently. So it's nothing here. It's just me, Luce, saying things like that. But th that's my, my hypothesis, because over the years, I have worked with several uh, people with dyslexia and they, they are really sensitive. They have a, uh, another way to see things. They think outside, of, uh, outside the box more easily. So um, so now that you know the reading process, uh, the, the four uh, different parts, there are different types of dyslexia. Um, some, some websites or some sources will say there's three, some of them will say there's five, some of them will say there's 12, um, but I wanted to keep it simple today. <laughs> so, because I, I just want you to understand in your class, uh, the, the kids that have uh, uh, difficulties in reading. So there's three, three main categories. The first one is the the most common one, uh, it's over 75% of dyslexic that has the first type, so the phonological uh, dyslexia. Basically, um, it's uh, this uh, subtype is a deficit in phonological processing and it impacts pretty much the ability to decode sounds. Um, people with uh, this type of dyslexia have a harder time in processing the individual individual sounds in the words. Um, this is pretty much what you have experienced in the beginning of this workshop. Uh, so you see, it's pretty hard. So uh, it, it's hard to, to love reading actually. So uh, they have a tendency to have an impulsive reading uh, and imprecise. Often they will, um, they will read the first part of the word and then they will guess the rest. Uh, they are really good in the context and the meaning. They try to, uh, to make sense really quick about what they are reading, but because of this impulsiveness, um, they, uh, so, sometimes they miss the, the comprehension part. It's not precise. Um, so, and they want to guess the word according to the context. Uh, the second part is uh, not that common. Uh, to be quite on, honest with me, in my experience, I just worked with uh, dyslexic that had had phonological uh, difficulties. It's pretty rare that that you see rapid naming. Um, sometimes it's dyslexia that happens after an accident, for for instance. So you are it's, it's people that were not born with dyslexia. It's just they, they had an accident and something in their brain just uh, disconnect and so they have difficulties um, in reading but in, in, in a different way. Um, it's not always accident but uh, it's often uh, um, in the research the, they often say that. Um, it's also referred as visual dyslexia and people that has this type of dyslexia have a normal phonological processing but their fluency um, and most likely <laughs> their comprehension is affected. Um, in fact, they have important difficulties in recognizing word as a whole. Um, let's say telephone. If I see it, um, I, I know it. I know it. I don't have uh, to think about every letters, every sound in the word. Uh, if if I see um, words like tough. Stuff. It's it's a words we, we see often, uh, so I I should I should recognize it. Um, in French, it's a mot étiquette, but uh, in English, I don't know if 
there's uh, a global new... word global, global word. words yeah thank you <laughs> yeah exactly so global gl uh, global words um and so um people with rapid naming they don't uh they don't have this ability to recognize word globally so uh so they are always reading every every sound um what 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 else i wanted to say about that oh yeah all of the energy of the person is mobilized in reading syllables by syllables by syllables and leaving behind the 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 understanding of the message and the 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 context and uh, double deficit it's pretty rare also it's about 10 percent of dyslexia but uh, it's a a great mix of both so which makes uh, reading and writing really tough I, I will uh, quickly talk about uh, dysgraphia. You might have heard about dysgraphia also. I don't talk about it in this workshop because it often goes hand in hand with dyslexia. So this is the difficulties in uh, writing. So uh, if so, uh, oftentimes if you have dyslexia, it's most likely um, that you will have also dysgraphia because it's pretty uh, close together. Um, I never saw also a, a student having only dysgraphia. It exists, I know, but it's it goes pretty much hand in hand with uh, dyslexia. Um, in your class. So what is it in your class? So these are some manifestation in class. Uh, you, can, uh, you can see um, a dyslexic won't have everything on the list. It's not a checklist that you, you need to have everything. It's just some of uh, some manifestations. Some uh, students will have a few of them. Some of them will have a lot of them. So since there is a lot of variation in the intensity of a dyslexic, a dyslexia, uh, these are um, uh, clues you may find in your class if ever uh, uh, somebody has problem reading. You can have in your mind, okay, if, if I recognize a student by a, a lot of those manifestations, it might have, uh, it might be great difficulties in reading. So let me read it to you. So accuracy in error in reading, uh, confusions of some letters or syllables as you have experienced before, uh, addition, subtraction, or inversion of syllables also, confusion be between close sounds, uh, difficulties to decode a word or recognizing frequent, frequent word, uh, slow and choppy reading, missing pun punctuation, uh, this one, um, it, 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 the, the student is uh, so much focused on reading every uh, syllables or, or sounds that they just skip the punctuation, uh, which leads to uh, difficulties in comprehension with a lack of comprehension when reading. Um, spelling, verbs, and gra grammar errors, uh, pretty frequent also. Dislike of reading and writing. So, here we are in the more emotional part of the dyslexia. So they, they hate it when we ask them to read, um, the, especially if we say, oh, I, I don't think you, you understood this part, go read it again, and then I'll explain it to you. This is not a, a nice to, a thing to say to a dyslexic because it's pretty painful again. Um, Avoidance of reading and re writing situation, and they have cognitive overload very, very quickly. Uh, intervention in class. So th this was a part where I explained to you what is dyslexia. I don't know if it's uh, clearer. I'm, I might uh, ask you if ever you have questions. I, I will look at the chat if there's something there. Ah, thank you, Emily, for the LD at school. <laughs> okay, at what age does it, does it manifest? Okay, that's a good good question, uh, Epta. Um, there, uh, it, it really starts at the at the age of learning reading, how to read at the elementary school. Um, 
we have the chance to, uh, the, the chance uh, to have adults but in uh, elementary school dyslexic uh, children it, it it's so painful for them to go to school because uh, uh, they fail at learning how to read the it, it's pretty really hard so um yeah it, it manifests pretty much at, at at six years old when you learn to read pretty much um that leads me to another um to an, another thing it doesn't go away uh, some dyslexic will learn how to use strategies so much that the it does it doesn't bother them anymore uh, but um, it doesn't go away it's uh, it's in the brain so uh, uh, we can learn how to use strategies um, one of my students told me that dyslexia was like having to carry a dictionary in his backpack every day so you can you have to to carry the dictionary in your backpack but um and it's painful it's it's not fun to to have to carry a dictionary every day but you can uh, adjust the straps or you can buy a better backpack to carry your dictionary so i thought the analogy was pretty interesting because that's the same thing with dyslexia it's uh, something you have to care you have with you and you have to deal with it basically so that's good no question continue <laughs> um I, i'm curious do, do you know if there's any dyslexic in your class or it, it is it because this this is uh, the reason why you wanted to to um to be in my workshop basically so i don't know if uh, you have dyslexic in your class I, yeah virginie i don't see everybody let me see if i can see most of you i'm not used to uh, zoom <laughs> i work with team with the team usually okay so so i saw uh, i saw a few of you uh, say yes with your, with your head so um i used to be a, a teacher also with my class and i i wanted you to have um I, I want you I wanted you to have a simple workshop, you know, to understand well. That's why I, I wanted you to experience um, mostly what it's like to, to have a dyslexia. Um, and I, I don't want you to feel overloaded by the intervention in class also, because sometimes uh, we have a dyslexia, uh, we have a dysphagia in our class, we have, uh, I don't know, if most of you have a lot of learning disabilities in your class, uh, but it can be overwhelming. And my approach is to uh, to be to keep it simple and to uh, um, to answer the needs of most of of the the the, the student in our class. So, so that's basically my approach. Um, I don't know if you have any. Uh, you don't have any orthopedagogue or counselor in your school, right? Do you, do you have uh, no, not that much? Yeah, <laughs> okay. It depends on any uh, uh, on your school, but um, the most important when you have somebody who has special needs in your class is to take the time to think uh, about a solution, and it's. It's pretty tough to do that because we are running all the time and we have planification to do we have um, exams to uh, um, to prepare to uh, to uh, corrige what is it we have exam mark correct to correct okay yeah. to correct okay i didn't know if it was too french for, <laughs> okay but so, come work for a school board an english school board for three years and you're 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 good to go <laughs> yeah <laughs> So, yeah, we have exams to correct, and uh, sometimes it's hard to take the time. Uh, so, if ever you have somebody in your class uh, or in your school, sorry, um, that can help you to take that time and talk about th the student that caused you this uh, this discomfort because you want him or her to uh, to progress, um, it's the the best way to to do that uh, to talk to this person and take the time. Um, 
my approach because that that's pretty much what I do in my in my school I'm pretty much a, a counselor a learning disability counselor so when teachers have interrogations they just come and see me and we take the time basically uh, to find a way and this is my universal uh, approach this is the problem so solving approach it might seem very obvious to you so let me show you um but I'm telling you, this is the time we have to, to take sometimes to really uh, find a good solution for, for every student. So the first one is identify the problem. And I will emphasize on this one, what is disturbing? Um, sometimes, and it's not, I, I don't want to judge teacher, it's really not that, but sometimes I, I have a, a teacher that comes to me and he says, he say things like, uh, I think he's lazy, you know, I think, it, I think it's, he's lazy. Um, but sometimes we find that when we are talking that it's dyslexia, it's, it's, it's just really hard and the, the, the student is just overload. So by naming what is disturbing, um, we can, we can push away the, um, the perception. Uh, what is disturbing? Well, what is the, the real problem is that the, the, the student doesn't understand what he reads, let's say. Uh, so take the time to, to question yourself about that and leaving behind the perception you might have. It's really hard to do, uh, but uh, yeah, <laughs> we have to say to, to do that. Uh, in which context does it appear? Uh, and what is important, and it can, and you can use this, this, um, this approach with any problem, any learning problem. Um, second one is get the student involved. Um, usually, the student knows that he has difficulties. Sometimes it, he doesn't want to say. And when you uh, you ask them about their difficulty. The, their difficulties, they will open up and propose solutions that work for them. So uh, make him feel that you want to help her, help him, um, and then generate solutions. So in, I, I, I wrote be innovative because sometimes uh, we have to think outside the box, uh, imagine different possible uh, intervention, intervention, well, intervention. Um, choose one and define who will be uh, responsible for, for the strategy, for the solution, and try it. Um, and later on, evaluate the, the inf intervention. Did it work? Uh, did it help the student? Do, did we find the, do we have to find a, another solution, et cetera? This is pretty general. So I know if you were, uh, in, if you are in this workshop, you want to know more about solutions specifically for dyslexia. So here I come. <laughs> um, the first one is establish a caring relation with, their, with your student. Um, this also may, find, may be obvious, but uh, with experience, I, uh, I saw a lot of students that were um, traumatized with their past. They were called lazy. They were called uh, not intelligent sometimes. Um, and you sometimes I heard horror stories. So just be caring with your, your student and they will open up about their, um, their difficulties. But sometimes they want to hide it uh, most of the time. They want to to push the diagnosis away uh, in order not to be judged again. So I, 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 uh, I put an emphasis on, on this one, but it is a really important one. Um, second one, use different ways to explain. As you have experienced uh, in the second or third slide when I asked you to read, um, if we always explain with um, um, with writing and reading, uh, it's really hard for a dyslexic to understand. So used graphics, um, uh, drawings, uh, different ways to explain videos, it works a lot. Um, and then break up the task. 
uh, it's hard sometimes for dyslexic to organize their task. So um, help them to, uh, to, to break the task and learn how to break the task also. Allow breaks. I talked about uh, cognitive overload. So um, it's not a, as you have experience, again, I refer a lot to this experience, but you, it can be hard for a dyslexic to be a uh, hundred percent uh, um, concentrate on the task he has to do. So uh, allow breaks if needed. Um, refer the student to a professional if there's one. Um, use software such, such as read and write or word queue. So uh, this, I, I've put it um, in the bolder, uh, bolder letters, this one, because this is pretty much um, the, the, most, uh, the most known solution for a dyslexic, because basically those two uh, softwares, there's a, a other, other ones, but I wanted to, uh, to, uh, to present you the two that are the most popular. Um, I know there's Claro Read also, but I never tried it. So uh, I don't know in, in your school what's the, the most common one, but uh, basically what it does, it will read the text for the student. So it, it will uh, unload the, the, the effort that the, the, the student has to put into the writing part and then they will, they will fo focus on the comprehension part. Um, and lastly, reduce the color contrast, black on white. Uh, so I know that contrast can be really hard for the eyes. And I know actually there are um, some studies um, in uh, France, right now they want to know if there's a part of the eye um, the eye system that doesn't get the the contrast between between black uh, and white so sometimes you can put a yellow uh, transparent sheet uh, on top of the the sheet it, it just reduces the, the the contrast uh, i know it worked re really well for some students uh, i know also there's uh, rulers with uh, yellow uh, or pink sometimes we have pink um, transparent um, a transparent window in the in the the ruler so you can um, buy those kind of thing but a transparent yellow sheet it's it really does the trick um and that's pretty much it. I don't know if we have, oh my God. Okay, five minutes. <laughs> I, I knew I had a lot of things to tell you, but um, oh no, it's uh, at 3, 4, 15, right? The end? Yeah, okay. Lots good. of time, time for, for questions. questions. <laughs> okay, <laughs> good. So do you have any questions? It's now time. So I, I see Emily, uh, immer, uh, immer, immersive reader. Yeah, it works. Oh, uh, go ahead. Michelle, yeah. Yes, okay. So I don't know if this is a, uh, okay. So my question is, does it present similarly in the French language as well as it does in the English language? Because I do get a lot of adult education students that transfer over from French and come into the English system and so when I was reading your example, I did pretty good at it because it's been quite a few years of practice that I've been able to read that, you know, the struggles that are, my students are facing. But at the same time, like there's the issues of adding the ease and the different things from the transfer over. So is there, I don't know what my question is, but basically, is it similar? Yeah. Uh, yes, it's similar because um, um, the, 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 the processes of reading are pretty much the same. Uh, of course, there's, there's the language um, difficulties when we um, when we read in English, let's say, and we are French um, French language. Um, what, what what did I want to say? Uh, a French person, uh, but the the difficulties are are really the same. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Virginie has her hand up too. You can't quite see it, but she's got a question. Okay, Virginie, sorry. Uh, because of my background. Yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> I just saw your hand. <laughs> I changed the color earlier. I was so proud. Oh, <laughs> um, we were thinking at my center to offer a workshop to our students. Yeah. At large. Uh, um, about the technological tools they can use to become more autonomous learners. Yeah. Uh, those workshops are usually uh, for the teachers, but mm -hmm. I thought, why not <laughs> switch it up? And uh, so is there something, um, a tool or, uh, or an organization or people that could help us build that workshop targeted to everybody that wants help with reading and writing literacy? Yeah. Yeah, uh, of course, uh, I just presented the Likip Shuk, so you can contact them, it's, it's free, and uh, they, have, uh, uh, they have people working, I, I work for them sometimes, but I, I still have a, my job uh, on the side, I would say, <laughs> but uh, they have uh, people uh, full-time doing workshops for, for this uh, according to her needs and this one could be a, a, a great one um, i'm i'm happy there's a, a few minutes left a few minutes left because after your questions i will sh quickly show you read and write um, how it is because it's free it's a, a nice tool to have you can you can have the premium version but the free version is really good and um, i have a teacher here in my uh, in my center that uses it uh, universally. So everybody has their read and write application uh, and it helps, of course, uh, the, the learning disabilities uh, part of his class, so. Okay, thank you. Yeah. I don't know if there's other M's. No? No. Uh, Frank? <laughs> Yeah, just a comment uh, to pick up on what uh, Michel was saying. Dans le secteur adulte, uh, plusieurs fois dans les cours d'anglais ou sur les cours de base, même en français, mm -hmm. des fois, ça arrive que ça dépasse les cours. Le, le, le présentateur ou l'instructeur, il remarque pas qu'il y a des problèmes de dyslexia, même dans leur langue. Il arrive, il, on, we don't have, je sais pas comment se dit en français, un IEP, an Individualized Education Plan. Yeah. Et ça, ça arrive, des fois, c'est même trop tard parce que, They'll show fluency in their speaking. They don't have phonological problems, but then no. when it gets to the reading and writing levels, uh, yeah. there's some difficulties. And now it's almost, they're stigmatized. Uh, so I don't know, sometimes they come from cultures where it's not even uh, appropriate to mention that you have mm -hmm. this kind of disability or uh, inability. And uh, we're kind of in the dark here. So I appreciate being referred to a, a Cape Shop and some of those uh, read and write uh, tools that you're talking about. Yeah, and that's um, that's why the the teacher I was talking before that uses read and write for everybody for everyone. Uh, he had uh, two or three students that did not have anything uh, in their uh, um, they, they didn't have any uh, difficulties or diagnosis or what sort. And he th he thought maybe I can do something with with them because they have difficulties in writing. Uh, so he, he started using read and write for everybody, everybody, but those two or three students, it really helped. And we really um, could answer some needs there because they could uh, for for once understand well a text or um, and and react to the to a text because they were so focused on on reading and it was really really hard for them. So we don't we don't really need actual actual diagnosis. Um, I know for college and university it's it's different, but. Um, I know that for uh, adult sector, uh, we don't need uh, a diagnosis to put things in place such as uh, softwares or uh, different um, uh, measures uh, for, for them. So it's, it, it's worth a try, I would say. Yeah, uh, Emily? Yeah, actually it's a coincidence because um, Abby, my colleague, just jumped in here. <laughs> Um, cause he has, um, uh, a role with Merecy uh, about, um, assistive, uh, technology. Hello. Sorry. My cat's jumping on my oh. desk. <laughs> <laughs> Wants to be part of the workshop. Um, yeah. So like Avi, um, he works closely with a couple of the wonderful people at Ekipshuk 
to deliver workshops to help teachers learn about using different tools and different ways that they can make things more accessible for their students. So, yeah. Yeah. So don't, yeah, don't hesitate and uh, ask them because it's free resources and they can come into your school and uh, explain more in depth uh, uh, different different softwares, different ways to, uh, to, uh, uh, to teach or different tools. So uh, th this was a very uh, Dyslexia 101, but uh, you, can, you can dive in if you, if you want, yeah. So I don't know if there's any other questions. I don't see everyone. So uh, Emily, do you see? Uh... Nope, no other questions. Nope. Yeah, but okay, I'm sure so, people would love to see the demo you spoke about. Yeah, yeah. So I, I will talk to you about read and write. Um, Word queue, I, I will I will not go in depth because we have to uh, to pay for that. And um, I think read and write is pretty genius because it's um, it's an extension of Google. So if the student installed this extension, it will follow his account. Uh, with any computer it goes. So if he goes to the library, connects his, his Google account, he will have them read and write. And there's a, it's pretty much free. I have the free version. I, I got to try the premium version. Um, I, I know that it's free for, um, for teachers, the premium version, you can uh, subscribe to it. I don't know why mine just disappeared yesterday. So I wanted to show you, I wanted to uh, fix that before today, but um, I will show you the free version. So anyway, this is the, the version the students will, um, will use. So uh, and if you can invest, of course, with your school, if it's the dec decision you, you want to, to make, um, it, it's a it's a nice also to to have read and write um this is the website i was talking about previously um so let me show you with this website if i go for instance on an article um so ld at school it's really genius <laughs> um so read and write it is an extension so you have to go in the chrome store uh, to uh, to um, install it and read and write as you can see it will go in, it will go into my extension so uh, I will click on it this is a um, let me show you the website there it's a, a um, purple puzzle so when you search on the Google store uh, it, it's not the first that appears so I don't know why uh, but you have when you know it's a uh, purple puzzles you will find it <laughs> in the choice um, so as you have seen there's um, can I move it uh, there's a, a bar that appeared because I, I clicked on read and write um, and pretty much I can select the text and if I click on play it will read it to me so that's pretty much how it works so uh, it works on on Google uh, Chrome um, so let me. The quality of the Pegasus Subrelator Ship from the. I don't know if you have heard the voice. Uh, this is in French, so it, it was not so good. You can change the the, the, the settings for you to have uh, the English uh, the English uh, voice. And there's a few. So if you prefer uh, men or women or whatever, they they have uh, different voices. You can settle also the the rhythm of the voice. So if the student needs to have it slower or faster, you can also uh, set up this, uh, those, um, if, if you go uh, pretty, in English, it might be uh, settings. Uh, so you see, I have uh, Amélie in French, but I can select few uh, other uh, people in French uh, and in English also. Is there English? Uh, of course there is English. In Ontario, this is the, pretty much the, the equivalent of, uh, of uh, work you here in Quebec, uh, uh, that's what we use. I don't know if you you use uh, work you in your in your class or if you, uh, no, not not really. Okay. Work, work queue is sometimes used with the students because it doesn't require internet connection. So during the exam, it's good. So yeah. they can use it before the exam and during the exam. But yeah. Read and, and write has a lot more going for it. <laughs> Yeah, and that's a good point you 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 made because um, I use read and write pretty much every day with the the, the student. But when we have um, 
a student with learning disabilities uh, and he has to go in exam, it's important to, uh, to transfer uh, with the word queue. Um, now we have young students, they are used to switch it up uh, from a, a software to another, it's pretty much the same, but uh, yeah, read and write is, is really, uh, really good. Um, it's, it's the same as, as word queue pretty much. Um, yeah, so, so you, you just have to select from a website. If you go on Google Doc and you create a new Google Doc, it will, it will work there. Uh, it will work on a PDF if you open it with uh, Google Chrome. So everything with Google Chrome, you will have it uh, with uh, read and write. So it's pretty easy. Um, as you can see, there's a, a lot of um, icons that are uh, that I cannot access, but there's um, the prediction word prediction when you when we pay for that for the not for the premium version. Uh, there's also the dictionary. Uh, there's um, a visual dictionary. So let's say a student doesn't know a word, he wants to find out uh, what it is. We have also visual, so a dictionary. Um, I have the, the play button, the pause, the stop when I want uh, to, I want to have a, a text read it to me. Um, this one, it, I can select um, a, a part of the text and make it uh, as a picture. So this is the, the, fun, the function here. Um, this one, I don't remember. Let me see. Uh, I can create a vocabulary list also with a text. So uh, I cannot show you today because I don't know why the, the premium version that got away. Um, I can also use highlight. And here it is uh, practicing uh, speaking uh, practice. Uh, so uh, for a student who are learning a second language or um, um, if you have class, I know that the, there are teachers, some of you are, are uh, uh, teaching second language, maybe French or other, so they can practice reading out loud and send it to you directly. So it's uh, really good for that. So it's user friendly, as I would say. So is there any question for that? For read and write, so try it. It, it will be very. Uh, you, you will see it's uh, very interesting, and um, we might here in my center we might decide to have uh, to have a package deal with uh, read and write and have everybody to have a uh, read and write. So it's uh, really good. It sometimes it it also um, substitute antidote that can be uh, uh, pretty complicated for um, early. Um, early uh, levels, uh, uh, like uh, let's say for, for second, secondary one, two, three. Uh, so um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I will look in the chat if ever uh, Google Thanks, read them. Yes. I, I'll ask the repeat person, okay. Yeah, I stuck in the chat too. Um, the Microsoft, the, the Microsoft has a similar tool called Immersive Reader. So if you're a Microsoft board, that Immersive Reader thing, which is super similar to this bar that Luce has just shown us, yeah, is yeah. also available built into all sorts of Microsoft tools. Yeah. Inclu including Microsoft Edge. So you don't even need an account. It's yeah. really neat. Yeah. So uh, yeah, there's a, a few uh, software that slowly replace the word queue that we have to pay for for the software in on every computer so that changes the the game a little bit mm -hmm. um, well thank you so much for uh, for being there and i i hope uh, i answered a lot of uh, your questions i i wanted to keep it simple because uh, um yeah, you have a lot to do in your class, and I didn't want to to sound too theoretical, but uh, yeah. So awesome. thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. So thank you so much to Luce for being here to share um, your knowledge about dyslexia and give us some ideas, uh, some practical tools for how we can help our students who are struggling with their reading. Um, we will be wrapping up the conference in Gathertown in about five minutes at 3.15.